On the evening of May 3rd, 2007, three-year-old Madeline McCann disappears from her bed while on vacation with her family in Portugal. Local authorities immediately launch an investigation following extensive leads, including an inquiry into Madeline's parents, Kate and Jerry McCann. Despite all the leads, there have been no arrests. In these exclusive interviews, we'll hear from two men who have tried to answer some of the questions surrounding the disappearance of Madeline McCann. Can new cutting edge technology help crack the case? Who is this mysterious man spotted by multiple eyewitnesses and was a promising lead in the investigation overlooked due to a scandal? Praia de Luz, Portugal, the evening of May 3rd, 2007. Madeleine McCann is abducted from her bedroom and has not been seen since. At the time of the abduction, Madeleine's parents, Jerry and Kate McCann, are dining with their friends at a restaurant just 60 yards away. They don't realize Madeleine is missing until Kate checks on her at 10 p.m. Portuguese authorities begin an investigation, but the McCanns worry that the police in the small parish of Praia de Luz lack the resources to quickly find Madeline. Over a month goes by. The McCanns turn to more unconventional methods to help find their daughter. One of the first people Jerry McCann reaches out to is Donnie Krugel, a retired South African police officer known for his ability to find missing persons. No, I went on their request. They asked me to come and assist. When Madeline disappeared, Jerry called me one night. He called me uh, and he said, I've heard about you and can I help? So I said, of course, we will do our utmost best to try to help. Krugel is making news with what he claims is a cutting edge device called a matter orientation system. Krugel claims his device uses an object's atomic makeup to detect similar or identical objects in the area. A person disappears. You find a few strands of hair left on a brush. You put those hairs into a gadget, and that points out on a map where in the world that person may be. Krugel claims his device uses a process called quantum detection to find anyone in the world. Once he has done a test with a hair sample, Donnie is able to geographically pinpoint an area by applying coordinates from more than one vantage point. As outlandish as this sounds, Krugel has seemingly had results finding missing persons with his matter orientation system. In the past two years, Donnie has traveled across South Africa to test the equipment. This is a long list of his successes. Most of those he tracked down were found alive. We cut off a sample of our cameraman's hair and sent him to hide in a cemetery. Donnie took two readings, and within minutes, he was able to point out where the cameraman was hiding. This person would be in this vicinity. And that's exactly where we found him. Six weeks after Madeline disappears, Krugel arrives in Portugal. Using hair taken from Madeline's hairbrush, Krugel attempts to find her with the matter orientation system. We had the signals, we repeated the signals. The signals showed Madeline McCann was still in prior to lose. Krugel's device narrows Madeline's whereabouts to within a one kilometer radius around the hotel. He is unable to narrow her location down any further. Over the course of several days, Krugel's readings show that Madeline's signal is not moving. Why would somebody keep her there for so long after she disappeared? Because of my background and the work that I've done with the technology, but also my work in the police, just said to me, it doesn't add up. We all hope and pray that she's alive, of course. But for me, it was highly unlikely. Krugel turns his findings over to the Portuguese authorities. I did speak to the police and I gave my map to them. Krugel also urges them to bring in cadaver dogs. Then the dogs arrived. A while later, it was about six weeks after I requested the dogs came. When the dogs detect traces of Madeline's blood in the McCann's car, the Portuguese authorities begin investigating Madeline's parents. And then everything changed. Uh, they focused on the family. For nearly a year, Jerry and Kate McCann are considered suspects in their own daughter's disappearance. It's not clear whether any of the investigative authorities use the information Krugel gives them. 
the case still haunts Krugel. Because we're talking about a girl, we're talking about the child that's missing. This is not the circus, this is not the show, this is awful. This family need closure. There's a criminal out there that knows what happened. Krugel still believes he can find Madeline if asked to join an investigation. We'll take a team from South Africa and we will go back and confirm if the signal is still in that area. It's important to note that Krugel took no money from the McCanns, nor does he ask for any payment related to missing persons cases. The only reason we'll do it, to help solve this tragedy. In the months following Madeline's disappearance, the investigation by the Portuguese authorities fails to lead to arrests. Multiple angles are pursued, including a group of mysterious charity collectors who had been working the area at the time. Early on, the police in Praia de Luz started hearing about some men who'd been going around knocking on doors and saying that they were collecting for an orphanage in a village called Espiche, which is very close to Praia de Luz. And it is absolutely rock solid certain that there was no orphanage in Espiche. That could mean only that it was a scam, that these were men trying to con tourists out of money. At least one of these charity collector scam merchants uh, had an interest in little girls. He came to the door as a woman was standing in her kitchen w with her own three or four year old. She realized when he was doing his spiel that he wasn't looking at her at all. He was looking down low at the little girl. Despite this promising lead, the Portuguese authorities are unable to track down the con men with their limited resources. Already hurting from the police's accusations and frustrated by a lack of arrests in the case, the McCann family raises funds to support an independent effort to find Madeline. In 2008, the McCanns hire a private company to investigate Madeline's case. The investigation, dubbed Operation Omega, is headed by British citizen Kevin Halligan. Halligan is most well known for helping negotiate a deal for multi-billion dollar commodities firm Trafigura. Halligan and his business partner, Tim Craig Harvey, are instrumental in getting two Trafigura executives freed from prison in the African country of Cote d'Ivoire. Halligan's international resume makes him seem like he's the man for the job. He had supported undercover operations in Northern Ireland in a technical capacity. He was in the SAS, working in the Balkans, Iraq. Nothing underscores Halligan's insider status more than his lavish Washington, D.C. wedding. The string quartet playing, champagne flowing, and you know, lots of military and intelligence community people. It was a really amazing day. A lot of money spent on it. Halligan promises the McCanns that no expense will be spared in finding their daughter. He asks for $600,000. We were invited on the day of the first anniversary of her abduction to engage in a six-month contract to try and find her. So we really had to go back to basics and re-interview everyone who had previously been interviewed to build up a picture of what had been going on in the days leading up to the abduction. The most promising lead Halligan's team follows is that of the bogus charity collector. A witness provides a description. Six feet, slim, scruffy, gap teeth, moustache. The trail leads to the local gypsy or Roma population. It was given to us on, on pretty good authority that the gypsy community had a dwindling gene pool. And it was suggested to us that over the previous 10 or 15 years, a number of particularly blonde children had been abducted for breeding purposes. Within the Roma community, the team hones in on a man they nickname George. The team on the ground in Portugal identified him because he looked so like one of the uh, identikit drawings. He was seen at a number of local markets. The team photographs George and brings the evidence to Jane Tanner, one of the friends on vacation with the McCanns, who'd spotted a suspicious man carrying a child. Jane Tanner, one of the people who had been hanging out with the McCanns during the whole day, and the person who had also put together a uh, identical picture of a bloke in, in a brown jacket carrying a child. When she saw the photograph, she burst into tears and said, that's the guy that I saw taking the child. George becomes the team's number one suspect. They attempt to pursue him. 
he was uh, followed by one of the teams relatively covertly and his awareness of what was going on around him was impressive. Uh, he forced the following team um, effectively down a dead end uh, so that so they couldn't actually follow him any further. Three months into their investigation, the team feels that they're getting close to actually finding Madeline's abductor. Then, the McCanns receive a devastating blow. Three months into Operation Omega, investigators hired by the McCanns to find their daughter have found a man that they believe is a very viable suspect in Madeline's disappearance. However, just as they're about to close in on the mysterious George, calamity strikes. I went to our local news agents to pick up papers on the Sunday morning and, and found Halligan all over the front page. Of that was my first real understanding that, that there was a, a real problem going on here. The Operation Omega team is shocked to learn that Halligan is wanted for fraud. When I tried to get into the office the next day, um, the locks had been changed because Kevin, having promised me that he had paid the rent, hadn't. And Kevin took, took the balance of the money. That was at the point that Kevin disappeared off to Rome. Some digging leads Craig Harvey to discover that his business partner is not the man everyone thought. And he had created so many persona that no one really knew who the real Kevin was. No evidence could be found to verify Halligan's cloak and dagger tales. Did go to Baghdad once for about four days. The purpose of the trip seemed to be little more than a photo shoot. It was as much about hanging out with the real players, which in so doing made him look like a player. Even his extravagant DC wedding is found to be a fraud. It turned out it was a sham, completely fake, and that the wedding ceremony had been conducted by a local actor. Authorities eventually catch up with Halligan, and he serves a short prison sentence for fraud related to the traffic Euro case. He was just a sociopath. He wanted business, and he didn't care how he got it. The collapse of Operation Omega is devastating. Most of the funds given to Halligan are never recovered and remain unaccounted for. Once Halligan is released, he becomes a hermit. I think by the end, he believed uh, in all these multiple personalities that he had. In 2018, Halligan dies of an alcohol-related brain hemorrhage. Any gains made by Operation Omega are overshadowed by the scandal created by Kevin Halligan. Still, Craig Harvey believes the team was close to finding an answer. I still believe that really good work was done despite the interference from Halligan. To me, the gypsy character George was the most credible line of inquiry. I think she was abducted for paedophilia. I think it was a chance abduction. I think because of her very clearly identifiable eye, once the alarm had been raised, she was potentially going to be too easy to find. So I believe she was killed and the body dumped um, it, probably in a sewer somewhere in Prada Luz. Though they've lost their daughter, been accused of her abduction, and been defrauded, the McCanns are undaunted in their fight to find Madeline. As technology and surveillance methods grow increasingly sophisticated, there is still hope that Jerry and Kate McCann will someday find the closure they need in the heartbreaking case of Madeline McCann.